Hello, Ambassador Popkov. It's a pleasure to meet you. Uh, good afternoon. It's a great honor and pleasure for me to greet you also. Thank you. This is uh, my spouse, Olga, spouse of Ambassador. Nice. This is nice also the daughter too. of our staff member, is Daria. Uh -huh. They nice today to show you what is the Belarusian traditional welcoming ceremony. Yes. Щиро вітаємо вас, дорогі гості. Ради вас почастувати хлібом і солі. Please uh, try uh -huh. uh, our piece of bread and dip into salt. Oh, it's very old, uh -huh. old tradition uh -huh. of welcoming all bewitched guests in the country, in the house, uh -huh. uh, because the bread it symbolizes a well-being, friendship. Oh, I see. But the salt it's some kind of protection from uh -huh. evil spirits. Uh, salt and bread also shows the hospitality of the host, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the openness, its readiness to conversation and dialogue. So a bit, bit Yes, a salt. little. Mm -hmm. And mm. it's a black bread. Mm -hmm. It's made with a very specific grain that's cultivated mm. uh, in Belarus. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's especially delivered for mm -hmm. the ceremony today. It's really good. Actually, this is the first time for me to be served food at the gate of the embassy. And thank you so much for this special experience. Yes, you are welcome. Mm -hmm. You have another experience, I guess, yes, when yes. visiting our emb embassy. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Wow. Your embassy is so beautiful, but at the same time, it's very cozy. You're right, it's my proud. We moved to this building uh, several years ago. Uh -huh. I agree that this uh, place is very calm, cozy, yes, and comfortable for the embassy. Uh -huh. You can see here uh -huh. uh, a number of traditional dolls yes, from do. Belarus. Uh -huh. These dolls uh, are made, uh, some of them, from straw. It's very oh. popular material uh -huh. for handicraft mm -hmm. and with the clothes. They all they are wearing national costumes it's beautiful. with nice uh -huh. embroidery and uh, uh, these dolls uh, served as an amulet to protect uh, the peasants oh. from evil uh, uh -huh. spirits. Uh -huh. Also, I want uh, to, uh, to tell you about our natural heritage. Yes, please. Belarus uh, oh. has a very <laughs> famous uh -huh. National Preserve, National Park, mm -hmm. that's called Belavirska Pusha. Uh -huh. It's a primeval uh, forest uh, with uh, trees of more than one, uh, several hundred years uh, ago, like fir trees, oak trees. Mm -hmm. And what is uh, unique is, is that our national symbol, Zubar Bison, oh, lives uh, uh -huh. in this uh, forest. Uh -huh. He's, yes, uh, I see it there. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I would love to visit one day. Um, Ambassador, I see some foods here and it must be from Belarus. Yes, it's uh, here represented all the traditional dishes in Belarus. You are familiar already with our rye black bread. Yes, I, I am. I want also to, to draw attention to these pancakes oh. made of potato. Uh -huh. The potato is growing quite well in the country. It smells really it's good. It's <laughs> hundreds of dishes uh -huh. uh, cooked with a potato. Uh -huh. It's most famous. I think we have very similar food in Korea as well, um, potato pancake. Yes, also mm -hmm. tell us that we have a lot of commonalities in our culture. Right. On this plate, uh, mm -hmm. we have uh, our sausages uh -huh. made of meat. Yes. Meat is a very important ingredient uh, in our kitchen oh, because okay. we are north country, northern country. Right. So uh, weather is quite cold sometimes. Yes, yes. We need uh -huh. a lot of energy mm -hmm. in order to resist mm -hmm. this cold. Mm -hmm. And so the meat is uh, mm -hmm. very common. Mm -hmm. The sausages uh, as a made like homemade style. Every family mm -hmm. has its own recipe of making the sausages. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So sausage is a combination of wisdom and culture. And the mm -hmm. culture, mm -hmm. absolutely. Mm -hmm. You're I right. see. Mm, thank you. Before tasting our national dish, it's also important to try our national drink, the Belarus. Uh -huh. It's like a tradition. So before. Before. Uh -huh. I wish you all the best. Oh, thank you, Ambassador. Salut. Salut. Mm. Is it bitter? 
It's yes, called it Belavishska uh -huh. bitter liquor. Bay leaf uh, and some uh, unique grasses that uh -huh, you can find uh -huh. only in Belarus. It's really good. Mm -hmm. Mmm, this is really good. Well, Ambassador, thank you so much for all the preparation today. Shall we move on and continue our conversation? Yes, it's yes. a nice pleasure. Mm -hmm. Um, so, I've heard that you started your career as an ambassador as you were appointed the ambassador of Belarus to Korea. Were you at all burdened by it? Uh, so, for me, it's a very challenging moment uh, because uh, it's my first person as an ambassador, mm -hmm. not only ambassador in the Republic of Korea. I know uh, as a visa, as being as ambassador of the Korea, I employed a lot of efforts in order to uh, explain what is a Korea for Belarusians, mm -hmm. what we can mm -hmm. do together in order to strengthen mm -hmm. relation and cooperation between the countries. In this regard, I would like to mention one of the important events in our bilateral relations. In 2017, Belarus and Korea celebrated 25 years mm -hmm. anniversary mm -hmm. of diplomatic relations mm -hmm. between two countries. Mm -hmm. And this year, Belarus and Korea, Korea organized Belarusian-Korean Investment Economic Forum that attracted a great mm -hmm. attention of business community and some governmental officials from mm -hmm. Belarus, including the Vice Prime Minister, took part in mm -hmm. this uh, very important mm -hmm. event in order to introduce the country. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. many other events uh, happened mm -hmm. over almost three years of my uh, working as an ambassador here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Korea and Belarus are quite far apart, I mean geographically, but I know that we share a lot in common historically and culturally. What are some similarities between our two countries? Yes, you're right. It's a geographical distance doesn't prevent us uh, from similarities uh, in the history and the culture. Belarus and the Korea have never started the wars with peace-loving countries. Mm. Belarus and Korea mm -hmm. suffered a lot during the Second World War, occupation, and they rebuilt mm -hmm. the countries after the wars. Mm -hmm. And so we also are located, is located our countries on the crossroad between mm -hmm. powerful mm -hmm. states. Mm -hmm. And we have to pursue well-weighted and balanced uh, policy Mm -hmm. in order to meet all of our expectations about uh, security, economic development. It's also very important to understand what I mean, that uh, the, the foreign policy and the good relations with our neighbors are, are critical significance mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for us. Mm -hmm. um, it's been about 30 years since Belarus became an independent country after the dissolution of the Soviet Union. Um, could you tell us a bit more about that period of Belarusian history, please? This period is uh, quite, quite controversial and quite interesting in the history of Belarus and other post-Soviet countries, republics. Belarusian sovereignty uh, was proclaimed in 1990, mm -hmm. in 27th of July, mm -hmm. when the Belarusian parliament mm -hmm. adopted a, a declaration about the sovereignty mm -hmm. of our republic. And then, in December 1991, leaders of three countries, Belarus, Russia and Ukraine, mm -hmm. took a decision mm -hmm. about dissolution mm -hmm. of Soviet, the Soviet Union and the Belarusian Agreement was signed. Since mm -hmm. that time, mm -hmm. uh, Belarus a fully independent mm -hmm. states. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, in 1990 and until 1994, uh, Belarus was a parliamentary republic. Mm -hmm. And in 1994, mm -hmm. after the adoption of new constitution, uh, Belarus uh, became a presidential republic. Oh, I see. Um, Belarus is a successful case of a country that had nuclear power in the past but achieved denuclearization. Um, how was this denuclearization made possible? After the dissolution of the Soviet Union, Belarus, along with the Ukraine and the Kazakhstan, became a nuclear power. So it was some many consultations and negotiations before taking the decision about dismantling 
nuclear arms in the territory of Belarus. Tactical weapons uh, was, were transferred to the Russian Federation in 1993. And then in 1996 it was taken a final decision to withdraw from the territory of Belarus strategic nuclear uh, weapons. But in order to ensure the signing of, uh, and achieving a special agreement, uh, Belarus uh, gets some assurances from big powers like mm. the Russian Federation, mm -hmm. United States of America and the United Kingdom mm. about the preservation and respect mm -hmm. of, the, of its sovereignty, its independence, mm -hmm. about avoidance of any economic pressure mm -hmm. on uh, our country. And after the signing a specific Budapest Memorandum, Belarus, like uh, some other countries, uh, voluntarily uh, gave up the weapons. And uh, after that, in 1996, Belarus also launched a special initiative about the proclamation free nuclear zone in Central mm. Europe. Mm -hmm. So denuclearization is uh, our consistent policy and we are very supportive for non-proliferation regime in this field. Mm -hmm, I see. Um, and what do you think we need to do for the peacefinding process on the Korean Peninsula? The peacefinding process is a very sensitive issue. The interests of all the parties involved should mm -hmm. be taken into account mm -hmm. in order to ensure the lasting peace in the Korean Peninsula. Belarus is a country that uh, voluntarily dismantled its uh, nuclear weapons, also uh, have a very rich experience and uh, we uh, will be ready to propose mm -hmm. the sharing of our experience mm -hmm. with the uh, Koreans. And uh, I believe that it's highly important to continue engagement between all the uh, stakeholders, actors on this issue and to find a compromise solution. At the same time, it's very important to keep in mind the questions about some guarantees to North Korean government with regard to the sovereignty, independence, security, probably the case of Belarus, one of the examples. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I see. Um, so in 1945, Belarus became a founding member country for the UN. Could you elaborate on one of the Soviet republics managed to acquire the status of the founding member country? There are many research just about uh, this issue in, uh, in monographs region, but uh, original explanation why Belarus became uh, the one of the founding members, mm -hmm. because international community recognized uh, contribution of Belarusian people, mm -hmm. of Belarusian nation, mm -hmm. along with the Ukrainian and some other countries, mm -hmm. to uh, the victory mm -hmm. during the Second World War. Mm -hmm. uh, Belarus was granted mm -hmm. the unique opportunity to sign UN Charter mm -hmm. and become a founding member of mm -hmm. this important mm -hmm. for us era organization. Mm -hmm. The participation of Belarus mm -hmm. in the UN activities mm -hmm. gave us a chance to introduce the country and develop relations with many organizations of the United Nations mm -hmm. systems. Oh, I see, I see. Um, recently, I've heard that there was a special event to celebrate the independence of Belarus and actually our team was also there to check it out. So let's take a look together. Thank you. On June 27th, an event was held to celebrate the Independence Day of Belarus as well as its 100-year history of modern diplomacy. Independence Day is celebrated on July 3rd, the date in 1944 when the Belarusian capital, Minsk, was liberated from Nazi control. The event was attended by around 250 ambassadors and diplomats from different countries. This year, in celebration of 75 years of independence, there were some photos on display from World War II 
and of the process of gaining independence. Belarus has had a turbulent history due to its location at the strategic center of Europe, but it was able to find its independence thanks to perseverance, determination, and pride. Finally, it's time for the main event. Ambassador Popkov gives a speech to thank the guests for coming. He also shares stories from the 100-year diplomatic history of Belarus, as well as its future diplomacy policies, based on the lessons learned from its tumultuous journey to independence. The memory about war that affected the territory of Belarus, pain of losses and respect for the heroism of our ancestors, defines the peace-loving policy of the country strong adherence to the supremacy of international law, freedom for self-determination, and the sovereignty of nations. The Deputy Minister for Economic Affairs at South Korea's Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Yoon kang hyun also attended and delivered a message of congratulations. The Korean government will spare no effort to ensure that our two countries can achieve greater and much richer outcomes of cooperation on the basis of our 27-year-old friendship. Amid celebrations and congratulations from many, the event wrapped up successfully. We hope to see Belarus flourish ever more on the strength of the passion and energy that enabled it to find its freedom. For me, also, it's a great honor and pleasure uh, to hold this event uh, in the Korea as the ambassador of Belarus. I would like to express my appreciation for being with us uh, today on this important day. So I would very be glad to meet all of these persons uh, next year. And I heard that there are many events held in Belarus to celebrate its independence. And one of the most popular and famous one is parade. The parades are a very popular form of celebrating uh, different remarkable events in my country. Mm -hmm. The National Day also celebrates with organizing a special parades when uh, veterans who participated uh, in the Second World War, military techniques, and industrial workers mm -hmm. participate at the march across the streets of mm -hmm. Belarus. Mm -hmm. uh, is the public like uh, these uh, uh, parades uh, and uh, with great wish uh, participate uh, in all the performances in, in order to show their own respect to mm -hmm. all the peoples mm -hmm. who participated in the liberation mm -hmm. of Belarus mm -hmm. 75 years ago. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I see. Um, this year remarks the 27th year since Belarus made diplomatic ties with Korea as an independent state. And um, the Moon Jae-in's government is really focused on new northern policy. How would you evaluate the significance and also potential of Belarus in this project? Uh, Belarus uh, welcomes uh, this initiative to develop relations with all so-called northern countries. Mm -hmm. We are part of this initiative and uh, to your knowledge, uh, representatives of the Pres Presidential Committee on North Economic Policy mm -hmm. visited quite recently Belarus in April of this year in order to, to make a feasibility study and uh, prepare mm -hmm. some kind of roadmap for enhancing uh, our relation and interaction in different fields mm -hmm. of mutual interest. Among these fields uh, is a promotion of innovative investment, business startups, and the cooperation technological areas, and many, many other uh, fields, mm -hmm. mainly connected with a uh, 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 very strong uh, uh, scientific basis mm -hmm. of both countries. Mm -hmm. I see. Um, what are some areas or fields that we can look forward to in terms of bilateral cooperation? Actually, there are a lot of opportunities for enhancing and broadening relations between our countries. Mm -hmm. Belarus are very, is very interested in deepening our cooperation in cutting edge technologies mm -hmm. and high tech technologies because, like the Republic of Korea, we would like to be responsive to the challenges of the fourth industrial revolution 
in such a field like a biotechnologies, artificial intelligence, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and new materials are of great importance uh, for our bilateral relations. Mm -hmm. I want uh, also to tell you about uh, one of the promising projects is actually implementation between two countries. The, the projects about uh, uh, sharing the experience of Korea uh, concerning the uh, digital transformation of uh, Korean economy. Uh, Belarus uh, will have a good opportunity mm -hmm. to acquaint with best practices of the Republic of Korea mm -hmm. how to make uh, their own economy more digitalized. Belarus will follow the same way and we plan uh, to develop on the basis of your experience a special program, a special roadmap for our economy, for digitalization of our economy and our industry. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I see. <clears throat> um, I believe not many Koreans know about Belarus. Um, what kind of efforts are being done by the embassy to promote Belarus as a more familiar country to Koreans? That's my big concern to to, to make more familiar uh, Belarus uh, for Korean audience. Uh, mm -hmm. For this purpose, we together with uh, cultural associations from Belarus, uh, some performance uh, group, organize uh, from time to time uh, participation of Belarusian folk dancing groups, uh, um, Belarusian representatives of cultural society in different festivals, in different competitions. Mm -hmm. Also, in order to tell more about the history, the culture of Belarus, uh, for instance, in 2017, uh, Belarus uh, donated a special book mm. uh, printed uh, in the country. It's mm -hmm. a replica of an ancient book, uh, first, first time printed in the Cyrillic in our region, mm -hmm. because we celebrated mm -hmm. uh, in 2017 500 years of printing uh, in our country and Eastern Europe and Cyrillic alphabet. Mm -hmm. That's why it was decided mm -hmm. by Belarus embassy and uh, other interested uh, parties in Belarus mm -hmm. to present with this unique volume of uh, replicas of first books mm -hmm. to the National Library of the Republic of Korea. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's, uh, it shows how it's possible uh, to circulate information about the country. Right, I see. Um, Ambassador, I believe this is my last question. What kind of plans do you have in your mind to further strengthen our relations between Korea and Belarus? I have many ideas in my mind, but uh, what I believe it's desirable to promote more exchanges between uh, Korean and Belarusian people. For these purposes, it's highly important to have a visa waiver regime between uh, two nations. Belarus already unilaterally adopted a special uh, visa waiver regime for some countries, including the Republic of Korea. Mm -hmm. So Korean nationals can stay in Belarus without visa for 30 days if they travel through international airport. Also provides a special conditions for Korean visitors to, to acquaint uh, with uh, Belarusian natural heritage. Mm -hmm. In particular, Koreans uh, can visit uh, Belarusia Pusha, it's uh, famous national park and the preserve in the Europe and to stay without visa. But in order to foster, to booster our relations, we need to have a special bilateral agreement mm -hmm. about visa waiver for our national for a short period of time. Mm -hmm. So I allocate a lot of efforts in order to ensure the signing of the agreement during my stay Mm -hmm. in the Republic of Korea. Uh -huh, I see. Um, Ambassador, thank you very much for your time today and we really look forward to your future activities here in Korea. Thank you very much. It was a great pleasure for me to communicate with you today. Thank you.